Hi, today I have an idea and I am gonna do it because why else would I be making this video? I came across this cardigan on Pinterest and it was very cute and I loved the little applique like poodle and lady and stuff on it. And when I was at the thrift store earlier today, I found a cardigan. Let me get it, hold on. Okay, I found this cardigan. It's not the same and it's not really vintage, but I found it at the thrift store. It looks kind of shapeless right now, but I think it's kind of cute. I like the collar on it and it has kind of a similar vibe, obviously not the same, but similar. And I want to maybe put some cute appliques on it. And I'm not a really, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this button. So I'm also gonna see if I can find some like really cute big round buttons and maybe sew a few more in. And then there are two ways that I could go about this applique thing. The first way is embroidering in this whole entire design. Yeah, I don't know if I wanna do that. Cause then I have to, I mean, I love buying supplies, but I would have to buy a bunch of thread and then, you know, like get, I don't know. I don't know if I have the patience for it. The other option I think is maybe I could try to find like fabric paint and then buy some just like white fabric or something, paint the image on and then stitch it onto this cardigan. I don't know which one I want to do. So I'm gonna go to Joann's and instead of doing research, I'm just gonna go to Joann's and see what they got and what I feel like makes me, tickles my fancy. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna do that. And I think I wanna do like a cute, well, oh, just like blew out my, I think I wanna do like maybe a lady walking Pomeranians instead of poodles because I have three Pomeranians and I'm a crazy Pomeranian lady. So. Maybe we'll do something like that. I have done Pomeranian art in like a vintage style already. So I'm just gonna take my own art <laughs> and do that, replicate this kind of vintage vibe, but with Pomeranians and just do like a lady walking three Pomeranians. And I'm gonna make them look like mine because of reasons. So I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to Joann's since we're gonna get either fabric and fabric paint or like embroidery thread or I don't know. We'll see, cause I have like, I have some references. Like I like these, but I'm pretty sure they're just like painted on. And I also found this vintage hot iron transfer that I guess you would transfer onto your items. So they had that in that time, but I like the limited color palette. And that's something that I've always liked about vintage art is they have a very limited color palette because they, well, they just had a limited printing capabilities. So I think maybe what I'll do is paint it on. Cause I, oh, also I do have a shirt from the sixties that has a dog on it. Let me get it, hold on. This is from the 60s. I think it's from the 60s at least. And this is the shirt and it has this like dachshund on it. Dachshund. When you look at it up close, you can see that it's like a different type of fabric that was sewn on. And then this was printed. And then they put like gems on the eyes and the collar, which I kind of like, so I might do something like that, but I guess they do it too so that it doesn't come off in the wash. So maybe we'll do something like that. I'm gonna go see what type of fabric paint they have and we'll go from there. Two dogs. Now my question is, do I bring all the dogs or do I just bring Diglett? but the dogs like to come out, but he also has to get used to traveling alone. I make this joke every time I come here. Joanne, 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 Joanne. 
I'm begging of you, please have what I need. Are you ready to go in there? Oh, you sleepy boy. A sleepy, sleepy boy. He's a little nervous doing outings still. So we just have to do as many as we can to like get him used to going out and meeting people and being in new situations. Especially if I'm planning on showing him, I want him to be totally fine and used to just anything and everything that's happening around him. So even though he might look nervous during the video, it's okay. I, this is just the way that it goes. I have treats and I'm trying to uh, make it a pleasant experience for him. Sleepy boy. You sleepy boy? Yeah? Jumping into this, I probably should have sketched this first and then gone to the store to get supplies because then I would know basically exactly what I need, but oh well, this is what we're doing instead. So I'm sketching out the cardigan and then I'm gonna try to figure out my placement of where I want the girl and the dogs. On another layer, I am just sketching out how I want my lady to look. I'm referencing some other embroidered ladies from the 50s. I found these sassy looking <laughs> uh, tea towels, but I liked their poses and I was referencing to see how they simplified a lot of their shapes. So I kind of loosely based my design off of that, but I obviously wanted her to be walking. So that's just what I'm doing here.
with that, we're done with my design. I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm gonna pull out the fabric and I'm gonna just wing it and sketch it on there. I'm gonna lay it on top and see how big I want to make it. Just put down some random marks to give myself a basic guideline on how big I want it to be. This is how I measure things. Screw rulers. So referencing the image I drew, I'm just gonna basically sketch it back onto this fabric instead with just like a crappy blue pencil. <laughs> yep. And now she's basically ready to be cut out, so I'm just gonna grab my fabric scissors and cut her on out of there. There's nothing special about this, I'm just cutting her out of the fabric. Now I have my lady, so I'm just gonna flip her over and trace out her pants because I wanted them to be a different type of fabric. I just had some scrap black fabric, so you can't see it, but there's like a super faint blue line that I'm meticulously following. Then I make sure that it fits her, trim up anything I need to trim up, glue it down onto her body with this like fabric tack glue that's supposed to glue two fabrics together. And yeah, I basically do that for all of her like clothes and hair and stuff. So unfortunately my camera died and I didn't even realize it so you missed this part, but it's okay because we have two other dogs that we do. So you really don't miss a ton. Um, this one is Drakkar, he is my old man dog. So I'm putting on the little grays. I'm mixing the white and the gray fabric marker and just kind of fading it out a little bit with the gray one. I put some little beads around his neck and now I am tracing his body so that I can make another template for the rest of the dog bodies.
I'm gluing these dogs onto a second piece of fabric and then I'm gonna cut around again because they just ended up being very flimsy so I wanted to make sure that they had a little more substance to them. So I'm basically doubling up the layers. Since Pomeranians are fuzzy, I wanted to add some more texture, so I have these fur pieces and I wanted to do their whole body initially, but then I realized I would have a hard time doing the details, like their face and everything. So I opted for basically just making their torso and tail fuzzy and then leaving the legs and the head not fuzzy, just so that I can add details and everything in the design. finish all the doggies and then I move on to removing this large chunky button and putting on these white ones instead. Now we place where we want all of our little appliques to go. I also end up embroidering her on with just embroidery thread. I put a backing behind her and I attach her to that backing through the knit fabric. I also am laying down this string for the leash that I tie up and I kind of hide behind the buttons to make it look like it's going into the button and out of the button, if that makes sense. <laughs>
I finagle with these strings for like a bajillion years because for whatever reason every time I laid them out they just looked like lips to me. I don't know. I'm weird. I just kept seeing lips and I was like, why do these look like lips? So I messed with them a lot until I finally got kind of a swirly design that I ended up liking. But yeah, so that's just what I'm doing for like most of the time. <laughs> I start embroidering her on. My embroidery skills were sloppy in the beginning, but then I started kind of getting the hang of it as I progressed forward. This fabric was fraying a ton, so I ended up going back in and putting on like this fray stuff, the like anti-fray stuff that I got at Joann's. And then I also reinforced certain areas that were fraying really bad with just regular thread and like went over it multiple times to just kind of hold all of those loose pieces in place. So I attached my lady and I put on my buttons. This took way longer than I thought. So I think what I'm going to do with these is glue, use, um, where is it? This, this fabric tack stuff, glue them onto this. Like I'm going to put this behind here underneath. Then put glue down and like glue the pieces together. Hopefully it all adheres. And then I'm going to go in and like tack it down um, with just regular thread just to like hold it together even more. And then I have to put the other string to attach to the dogs and then we should be good. I forgot to film that part, but that's okay because it was boring anyway. So let's just move on to the reveal. So all in all, I enjoyed doing this. Even though embroidering it on was a pain in the butt, <laughs> I think it turned out pretty cute. I tried to fasten down the strings, like the little leashes as best as I could, but I don't know, they still slip around. So I might have to figure out a different way to do that. But for the most part, I'm pretty happy with it. And I feel like it does look vintage. Like it looks like it's from the 50s or 60s. So yeah, this was fun. What do you think? Should I do another one or I don't know. Okay, have a good day. Eat something tasty and get some sleep. Goodbye!